as you're looking at moving to North Idaho, buying property, developing that property, putting in the systems to support a house on that property, and then building the house, there's a lot to consider. And we've done a few videos in this Code of the West series that we're doing that talk about some of those different aspects. We've talked about roads, talk about utilities, we talk about buying land. There's, there's so much and we're gonna to continue to talk about it. And it may seem that we're jumping around a little bit, but it, it will all come together eventually. So as you're looking at building a house, you're gonna, you're gonna build a spreadsheet. And in that spreadsheet, it's going to have a breakdown of all the costs that you're going to anticipate in building that house. And that's going to be your cost breakdown. Um, for example, okay, your house is 350 or $400,000 or whatever it is. How did we get to that total? How does that break down? Where did the money go? So some of the things in that, in that cost breakdown may not be as apparent as you might think. If you're looking at a set of plans on paper, that may not capture the total cost of putting it together. And I want to talk about that a little bit today. Um, I'm going to go through some of the line items. Permitting, uh, surveying, excavation, foundation, garage floor, uh, sidewalks and steps, uh, driveway, then we start, we start talking about framing, and then trusses, which are produced at a truss plant and then brought on site and then installed typically by the framers. Um, we then have uh, septic to think about. If you don't have uh, sewer and you're on your own septic, is that your septic? Is that community leach field? What does that look like? Well pump, well pump system, windows, doors, and doors you gotta think about exterior doors, which are gonna be very different than your interior doors. Those interior doors, there's gonna be styles to think about. Are they insulated, uninsulated? Um, what wall are they going in? Are they on an exterior wall that is two by six, five and a half inches, or are they on an interior wall and they're only three and a half inches? There's some stuff to think about there too. Uh, then we talk about uh, roofing, rough plumbing. You can see we've got some rough plumbing, which would be what's inside the walls. It's gonna be, you can see we've got a hot water line, cold water line, we've got drain pipes. That's what the black pipe is. This is going to end up being a laundry room. Um, so there's rough plumbing that goes inside the wall. We're going to have the ele rough electrical. We're going to have the heating, uh, venting, HVAC. Um, we'll end up with insulation and then sheetrock. We'll finish that sheetrock and then painting. We'll have trim. That'll be trim around the doors, trim around the windows trim at, the, at the, the baseboards along the floor. And then there might be decorative trim, it might be crown or whatever it is that you wanna put in. On the outside, we'll have, we'll have uh, siding and soffit. Um, we're gonna have cabinets inside, countertops, carpet, wood flooring, tiling, and bathrooms. Then we have finished plumbing, which is gonna be sinks and faucets and the things that you put your hands on in the house all the time. It's gonna be those sinks, faucets, that maybe it's the, the disposal underneath the kitchen sink. Those are some of the things in the finished trim uh, on the plumbing. Uh, so that'll be the finished plumbing. Then we have electrical finish. That's gonna be the things you see again. That'll be switches and light covers and light fixtures and those types of things. Uh, might have a fireplace that could be a line item all by itself uh, and and that fireplace is just one item that could be twenty five hundred dollars or it could be ten thousand dollars depending on what you put in let's see we've got obviously appliances refrigerators dishwashers um, we're going to end up with hardware for the cabinets which is gonna be the, the, the handles on the drawers and the doors. We're gonna have 
Um, there's going to be things like site cleanup, like all the trash from the project needs to get hauled off. There'll be dump fees. There's going to be a porta potty on site. Um, there might be some cost for utility hookups with the power company, or maybe there's a local water company. There might be connection fees there. Uh, there could be miscellaneous lumber, and that could be like maybe you're building a deck on the back of the house, and that miscellaneous lumber is part of the framing, but it's for the deck on the back. That, so you start putting a price next to all of these items and it starts to stack up. Um, and there's other things to think about. If you have a set of plans done, that set of plans is gonna be drawn by an architect, it's going to be inspected by an engineer, and you're gonna pay both of those professionals for them to do that. And so that needs a cost associated with it. Um, we've got, what else have we got? I think we've just about covered it all. There's going to be maybe exterior lights. That's good. So you got to think about your interior lights. Obviously you want to turn the lights on in your bedroom, but you might also have exterior lights or floodlights that fill up the backyard, um, sometimes called security lights. Here's a set of plans that we had drawn that we really like. And as you can see in the kitchen, the kitchen has two counters, uh, two center islands, and we have a flame view stove here in the kitchen. What's interesting is that flame view stove, you can heat water, you can bake, it's got a cooktop and it's all uh, all done with wood. It's a wood stove, but it's a very expensive stove. So if I if I put in two thousand dollars for a wood stove, but then I end up putting in a five thousand dollar flame view stove, I'm not going to have enough money in my budget to build the house. So you really have to build your budget specific to the plans and specific to the site that you're building on. If I was to take these plans and put, put this house on the side of a hill, it's going to be one price. If I take these plans and I put them in an open field, it's going to be another price. So location and the site is going to affect the price just as much as what's drawn on the page. So think about that as you're building a budget or looking at at building a home that there is a lot to consider between what's on the page and what's on site. One thing that I really suggest when I meet with people about building a new home is the contingency budget. And typically what I plan on is figuring out the cost, assigning a budget, and then adding an additional line item to our budget called the contingency. And that's going to cover the surprises. And there's always going to be surprises. Maybe it's site conditions below the surface that you weren't aware of. Or maybe there's an increase in lumber between the time you start and when you finally order your trusses or your lumber package. There's always going to be surprises. I have a lot of conversations with homeowners about budgets and they want to know right down to the nickel what it's going to cost. You have to understand that there's a lot of things that fluctuate. There's logistical issues that you're up against that are going to affect, affect the budget. There's economy driven things like the price of lumber and concrete that are going to affect things. And so you need some flexibility, but there's also flexibility in, hey, we started out with a call it a $6,000 budget for our cabinets. Well, we went cabinet shopping and we found the cabinets that we're happy with for $5,000. Now you've got $1,000 that you haven't spent in that line item in that budget. And you can bank that away because down the road you might go shopping for your light fixtures in your house and say your light fixtures are $3,000. Well, you found some really fancy ones that you like that are an extra thousand dollars. You can pull that money you saved on the cabinets out 
and use that to get the fancy lights that you want or the additional lights or the under cabinet lights or whatever it might be that increases that lighting budget. So understand that as you go along, if you work with your contractor, have your weekly meetings or your bi-weekly meetings, and you're watching that budget as you go along, you know that you may have some wiggle room as you're going through making decisions. Because the line item budget, that cost breakdown that you're working off of, is flexible. Just because the money's in the line item doesn't mean you have to spend that much. If you can go shopping and manage that budget as you go along, not only can you hopefully come in under budget, but maybe have some flexibility to pick up some upgrades as you go along or trade some value that you put into maybe your flooring budget and take it out and put it into uh, upgrading your, your wood fireplace or the mantle uh, in the living room or whatever it might be. But you can move your budget around as you go along. And that's sometimes the advantage that you have in working with a custom builder versus a, uh, a track home builder is that custom builder is gonna have the flexibility to adjust as you go along and manage that budget. A track home builder doesn't have the time or the flexibility to make those adjustments in the budget, to manage the budget as you go along. They're going to wanna lock in a budget on a, on a track home and then turn their people loose, no changes, no stop and start, and just move through the process. So think about that too as you're shopping around. Do I want a custom builder? Do I want somebody that I can work with to build this home and, and add some of those custom features that I may want as we go along?